Hi everyone, uh, this is the last video in the topic for limits and continuity and this basically we will be talking about two things, L'Hopital rule and some of the things which I wanted to go over with the, before closing this chapter. So L'Hopital rule is some is a way or the trick for solving uh, problems for limits and continuity uh, and that can be only applied for uh, 0 by 0 prop, zero by zero type problems and infinity by infinity type problems. Uh, 0 by 0 type problems and infinity by infinity type problems only. So please uh, note that this is important that this can only be applied for these type of problems and what L'Hopital rule says is that whenever you see limit uh, x tends to a gx by fx uh, and that is going to 0 by 0 or infinity by infinity then this is also equal to limit x tends to a d by dx of gx and d by dx of fx. Uh, and what is d by dx is a derivative. Uh, if you are not familiar with the derivative, there is a f entire chapter which is already there which you can look at uh, about derivatives. Uh, uh, and uh, which would basically help you understand what we mean by derivatives. But I understand that this chapter we probably still haven't read about derivatives, but there is another chapter completely dedicated to that. So please do have a look on uh, about that. Uh, but basically the idea is that you can still take derivatives and get the, uh, if there is 0 by 0 problem, you can take derivative of the functions of numerator and denominator to get the answer. Uh, that is L'Hopital rule. It is handy in some problems. I recommend that you don't just use it, start using L'Hopital rule in every problem because you have to be smart enough to see whether you can apply. Sometimes you have to take twice or thrice derivatives. So I wouldn't really recommend it unless you really are sure that it is a L'Hopital type problem. So I'll go over some simple problems because uh, this is not something that is super duper important but I mean you should know this because it could be handy sometimes because if you're not able to do anything you can at least try this. So let's say you have a question that limit x tends x cube minus a cube by x minus a and we have discussed this problem in one of the videos. So what should we do to get the answer? We were factorizing the problem. So if we substitute x equal to a, this is a 0 by 0 problem. So we can apply L'Hopital rule. So what we can also write this as, we can write this as limit x tends to a derivative of x cube minus a cube and derivative of x minus a. And if you do derivative of these things, you will actually find that this becomes 3x square by 1. And again, you have to know about derivatives. If you are not sure, that's fine. Just you can learn for, you can understand just that the, the derivatives are 3x square and 1. How to calculate that? You can look at the other videos. And hence the answer would directly be 3a square. Uh, you can do another problem on L'Hopital rule uh, and it is limit x tends to 3. Uh, root of 3x plus 7 minus 4 divided by root of x plus 1 minus 2. Uh, and again, if you substitute x equal to 3, you will become 0 by 0 type problem. Uh, and if you take derivative of the numerator, that will come out to be 1 by 2 root 3x plus 7 times 3 divided by 1 by 2. Uh, into 1 by root of x plus 1. And now if you substitute uh, and this will get cancelled uh, and if you substitute the values you will get the answer as 3 by 2. So I mean this was just to give you an idea that you can solve problems using L'Hopital rule uh, and again you should know how to apply derivatives for that. If you do not know you should check out the next chapter where we will talk about derivatives. So I hope that this makes sense. Uh, I will just, I also want to go over through some miscellaneous type problems which I think could be important sometimes if you are not aware of them and if you just forget sometimes how to solve those things, uh, it could be a little difficult sometimes. So let me just very quickly talk about these things, like there are just two problems that I want to uh, talk about. Uh, so first thing is if you have been asked to calculate limit x tends to 0 positive sine of greatest integer of x by x and what is the answer? So a lot of people what actually they do is they just say that sine of greatest integer of x by x is should be similar to sine x by x and they just directly apply 1. However, you should remember that greatest integer function 
is something in which you get something like this and just slightly greater than if x is slightly greater than 0 then the value of greater integer of x is exactly 0. So, this is a problem is approaching 0 multiplied by uh, divided by approaching 0 exactly 0 divided by approaching 0 and the answer is 0 and not 1. So, this is something that people forget uh, and I just want to remind that sometimes greater integer functions come in problems and if you do not know if you do not remember that that could sometimes create problems. So, I hope uh, you will be able to remember this as sort of a trick that you, you have to do these things. Also sometimes it is not obvious but whenever you see functions like greater integer of function or fractional uh, functions you should try to uh, evaluate both left hand limit and right hand limit for instance I just wanted to give you an example here. So, for instance if you have x sin of x minus greater integer of x by x minus 1. So, if you take left hand limit then this becomes uh, left hand limit means limit x tends to x 1 negative x sin and as I was saying if it is just less than 1 this will actually become 0. So, this would become x sin x by x minus 1 and this will go to infinity whereas, if you do right hand limit this would be x sin x 1 minus 1 by x minus 1 and this is this would become 1 and this is 1. So, the right, right hand limit and left hand limit are different because of this function which is greater than 0 of x and that has discontinuity in it. So, the idea here is basically that whenever you see functions like greater than 0 of x uh, you should try to evaluate both left hand limit and right hand limit and that will help you evaluate the final limit properly because left hand limit and right hand limit could be different could be same. So, please evaluate both the limits other than just directly evaluating one limit. So, I just wanted to give you a caution also if you get something like sin in greater integer of x it is exactly 0 and not approaching 0. So, this was just some tricks which I think might be helpful uh, if you come across such problems. So, I hope you enjoyed the entire series of limits and continuity chapter we have a lot of other chapters there. Uh, including like all the calculus chapters, 3D vectors and other topics. Please check out those videos and we we'll love to hear your feedback. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, enjoyed this topic. Uh, so, see you next time. Thank you.